It's your name, Tati, back again with another video. In today's video, we will be doing the review to The Flash Season 8, Episode 1, Armageddon Part 1. Bitch. Okay, so... So it starts off with the villain. I want to call him Desperado, but I know his name is not Desperado, but it just reminds me of the song by Rihanna. Desperado, so I'm going to call him Desperado. I don't care. And he come from 2031, girl. He's seeing it. Well, I don't know if he come from 2031, but he went to, he, he appeared in 2031, and he was just looking at all the destruction that was going around, which I didn't really see much, but like damaged cars and white people running. And he's like, oh my God, the Flash did all this. We have to stop him. We have to kill him. And I'm like, damn Barry it's always somebody from your future that's coming to your present their past and trying to kill you like what is you doing in the future to make these people mad it's always somebody from the future thong from the future zoom the avatar from the future well yes yeah, avatar from the future the bow from the past present and future because he just was thinking overpoweredly thinking okay just everybody want to fuck Barry up, like, for doing something. Like, what is you doing? Okay, so Barry and Caitlin is talking about Frost and Pussy Pop. And I'm just like... I just thought of something, sister. They better not. What? Better not. Better not give Caitlin a... I'm ready to go back in the dating scene. They already did that. They already, she, it's already planned. They already did that. And my thing is, y'all barely do Wes Allen right. Barely, barely. The dialogue is finally getting back on track, but then y'all do, let me not even go into that. But y'all barely got Wes <laughs> Allen. Why you get married? Y'all barely, y'all barely got Wes Allen hanging, dangling on a thread. And then y'all got this dumbass Allegra and Chester. Chester, a goddamn 30 years old, and Allegra barely 20. Okay, which is disgusting. And now you're talking about Caitlyn. And then, the, the, mind you, let me give you a compliment where a compliment is due. Danielle hair looked nice. Yeah, I like the tone. I like the color pattern. Mm -hmm. Like it was definitely brighter. It was giving me L'Oreal. But that's it. Um, <laughs> so Caitlyn was talking about like, oh yeah, Frost has Pussy Pop Man, and you know she trying to get over him. I don't know, girl. Who cares? And so she was talking about. I think you know after Ronnie, um, you know she was like Ronnie's been gone for a period of time, and I think it's time for me to move on. As if this bitch hasn't moved on with Jay, with Jay in season two and Julian in season three. Bitch, you stay with a love interest. What the fuck is she talking about? As if she didn't kiss both men in the I mouth. Want a love interest. I now I don't know if she hunched Julian, but she definitely was hunching Jay tall ass, buff ass, cute ass. So I don't know what the hell this bitch talking about. Like, oh, I think I'm ready to get back into the dating pool. Bitch, you been in that pool. Oh, Barry's talking about his powers have leveled up. Iris is saying Barry's powers leveled up. Caitlyn powers. Caitlyn saying Barry powers and leveled up. Chester saying Barry powers and leveled up. Fucking Ray is saying that Barry powers and leveled up. Like, bitch, we get it. Y'all said it like 50 million times. Like, bitch, you're the one that don't watch our own shows and remember your material. We do. So y'all ain't gotta keep telling us that Barry leveled up. We saw where he yanked a uh, reverse flash in the last episode of season seven. He bamboozled that dude. Like we remember, y'all don't. Yeah, that shit was getting on my nerves. They kept talking about this damn level up. Moving on to Iris. Iris was doing Iris things, you know. Uh, she finally doing her job. She got a little podcast, which is on par for 2021. It seemed like everybody and their mama and Bethany got a podcast. So it's very on par. Um, she was uh, interviewing Kramer, Kramer ass. And I was just like, okay, girl. Like, I get it, but like, okay, girl. She over here talking about men and humans are equal. We, they should be treated the same. Like, duh, bitch. Like, what the... Oh God, I just, I don't like anything about, I just, I just don't like anything about Kramer. Like, I just feel like that whole storyline was just trash. And I'll never forgive Eric for that trash. This is like, I gotta go to Spark Fire. First of all, I'm hungry. And I'll never forget, um, uh, I didn't bring no mask, Kiana. Okay, so boom, we have a Barry and Iris saying, girl, he over here smitten, they on the couch you know, real comfortable, eating pizza, and the girls was coming after me because I said, ew, he touched her pizza. But, you know, you know she was like, but he touched everything else. I was like, you right. 
You right. He can touch anything else. You right. So Pete touching her pizza ain't doing much for her. She's still gonna eat it, girl. You right. Um, right, cute little moment. He just blushing, smitten by her. She over here calling him Mr. Allen. Talking about we need to have a, a baby. We need this a long time so we can make a baby, girl. They lean in. I'm leaning in, too. <laughs> right, and then knock, knock, knock. Interruption. Wow, that shit was, Wow. Okay, and my thing is this. I don't know who said it in the interview. I don't know if it was Grant or Eric, but one of them motherfuckers said that, oh, it was gonna, it's gonna be a funny, a funny little scene of how we introduced Ray Palmer. Bitch, I didn't laugh once. I didn't laugh once, okay? Eric, I'm your demographic, not children, and I don't even think children was laughing at this shit. I didn't hee haw, I didn't chuckle, I didn't even smirk. Not one motherfucking time watching Ray come and, and, and interrupt uh, West Allen about to hunch. Bitch, why would you do that? Now, mind you, I get, I get it, I get it. Interruptions are a easy, quick, and efficient writing tool technique when you don't feel like going to commercial, when you're pressed for time, you're like, okay, we just gonna put an interruption in there so we don't have to create a totally different scene and waste money. Let's just do an interruption. Therefore, we can bring him into this moment, into this scene, and break up the tension between Barry and Iris by bringing in new dialogue and a new character. Totally get it got it great but bitch are you gonna do it every episode you've been doing this since season four you've been on the show since season four you've been doing the same same shit since season four y'all just now catching on to it bitch i being new right i like I, listen i like i don't like it like, i just i don't like i don't like can you come up with something new like you could at least let their lips touch like damn like i was like in the moment like my lips was about to press to their lips like damn like <sighs> we were so close and then you just took it away from us like you like you could have like had them kiss and then the knock you could have had like iris like pull barry from the couch and try to take him upstairs then the knock like you could have did something different had me all up in the west allen moment like all up in their tea and then <sighs> Why does he do that? I don't know, girl. And, and he talking about, yeah, it was going to be funny. It's going to be a funny way to introduce Ray. <laughs> it's annoying as hell. Every time y'all talk about Eric, y'all got to do that laugh, okay? <laughs> but yeah, we excited to see Ray. We love Ray Palmer, girl. We love him. We happy to see him, girl. He tall. He looked like Superman. He played Superman back in 2009. He still looked the same. He's still cute. He's still handsome. He still got the muscles. We got, we glad to see Ray, okay? <laughs> but yeah, girl, the flush game came, and they were a little cheesy, a little corny. Their dialogue was very yeah. cheesy and corny. But I, yeah, but I liked it though. I feel like that was purposely done. Like I, I thought that I when thought that I it was. Saw it, I was like, what the? Are we in Alice in Wonderland? I thought it was pretty decent. The dialogue could have been better, but they just a meta of they just metas of the week, girl. And they made me want to play spades, watching their faces all they the damn did. time. Shit, I was like, damn, I want to beat a bitch in spades. So Chester makes an appearance with his fine ass. I mean, girl, that's how you know all these actors on The Flash really look better in person because Chester on the show is definitely different from Brandon, okay? So I wonder what Grant looked like in real life. I've never seen this dude in real life. I wonder yeah, if he looked yeah. 10 times better hey, yeah, in real life. Uh, no, girl, we ain't got money for that. But I wonder what Grant looked like in real life because Brandon is fine as fuck, okay? Brandon is fucking fine as fuck, bitch. Chester is cute, but Brandon? <laughs> okay, which makes me feel like, damn, then what does Grant look like in real life? Because we already seen Candace and we already seen her. He is so pretty. Yeah, because I was like, the bitch, first of all, bitch, you already pretty on the goddamn show. Then you got to look 10 times better in person. Shit, so what does Grant look like? Girl. Bitch, his skin pretty and everything. Who are these and actors? Tall and big hands. Yeah, he is tall and big hands. Oh, Jesus. Moving on. <laughs> Okay, so moving on. So Barry is finally doing his job as a CSI and, you know, working and stuff. And something that I really noticed in this episode. Did y'all notice how many flashbacks they were doing? 
they were doing a lot of flashbacks, which I was thankful for because my complaint of season seven was Barry or Frost or Cisco or a villain having these type of epiphanies, but like us as an audience not being in the moment with them. So I'm glad that it's, now, mind you, I feel like he overdid it a little bit, but I'm glad that they did it because I was like, okay, which gives better meaning to pep talks if iris gives barry a pep talk which i don't really like she's been doing them since season one but i digress if iris gives barry a pep talk and then all of a sudden he has this epiphany and we see the flashback when he puts two and two together and has this realization come over him it makes for better tv and then you're engaging with your audience so i'm glad that they did that okay, so let's talk about allegory real quick um i like allegra's character outside of star labs I like Allegra's character as a normal person, not as a metahuman. And I hope that it stays that way. I don't want to see Allegra ever use her powers ever again. Ever again. Because I feel like she's more likable. And I feel like she's more likable when she's just a regular person. Like, everybody on the show. Like, this is the Flash. I get it. People have powers. But not everybody has. The only people that don't have powers is Irish Chester Irish Chester, Joe, and Caitlin since she separated from Frost. Everybody else got powers. So, yeah, I like her better just as a journalist, right? Now, mind you, the scenes between Iris and Allegra were good, but I felt like it was a little bittersweet because you can obviously see Linda in that role. Um... And I was just like, damn, like, Linda would be great. Like, Iris finally established herself as a journalist, as a businesswoman. And, like, like Linda isn't here. Like, it's just like, damn. Like, it was kind of bittersweet. So, Iris has given um, Allegra another promotion, girl. She's in charge of everyone except for Iris. Like, she's their editor, right? And, um, girl, them <laughs> Girl, them them employees bodied the fuck out of Allegra. Like, girl, that bitch is deceased. <laughs> they bodied the shit. <laughs> they were like, um, who was you talking to? Who was you talking to? Um, no, no, no. We gonna do our own thing. Because Iris would want this. Because I think I, this is what Iris would want. And I'm like, y'all don't even know her. How y'all know what Iris want? Allegra knows her. So she, she wouldn't she know? But girl... They did not care. They bodied her ass. So Cecile and Barry get a scene together. And I'm kind of like, why? <laughs> like, I feel like they have definitely replaced Cecile when Joe was missing. Um, when Jesse hurt his back, I think that was like, what, season five? They started replacing Joe with Cecile. And I feel like, well, I'm going to speak for myself. I wouldn't have a problem with it if Cecile was more motherly. They brought her in as Joe's girlfriend and as a potential stepmother or mother figure to Iris and Barry and Wally. She was not that. She came in as Joe's girlfriend who had majority of her scenes with Joe and Iris and then they gave her powers in season four and Barry was being accused of murdering DeVoe and she was his defense attorney. Cecile's storyline and the use of her character ended in that season. There was no more use of Cecile's character after season four. I feel like they have written... I feel like her character is not of use anymore. She's been there since season one, two, three, four. She's been in every season. And I feel like... Season four should have been her wrap up. They're not using her powers logically. They're using her powers when a plot or a storyline or conflict has holes in it. It's the only time they use Cecile, which makes it easy for her to be unlikable because she just pops up and majority of her scenes now are with Barry and they're just not useful. Girl, you have no type of relationship with this man. Like it's that motherly. It's just annoying. Like, she was more annoying than Frost. And Frost is fucking annoying I'm, now that she's not, like, this villain anymore, right? 
Like, I just find no use in Cecile's character, and I feel like she should have been gone in season four. I'm trying to use her like Joe, but it has, it does not have the same effect because Joe had a relationship with Barry as a father figure and as a co worker and as the only person who knew him as Barry Allen, who is the Flash. So Joe knew him in three different aspects of Barry's life. Cecile only knows Barry as Barry Allen married to Iris West, the Flash. Okay, moving on to the scene and only scene in Star... No, there was two scenes in Star Labs, I think, which I was very grateful for because I'm tired of seeing that hoe. This scene where Chester is talking and he says something like... He says something about being dead. Like, oh, I wish I was... No, he didn't say he wished he was dead, but he was like, I, it feels like I'm dead or I'd rather be dead than to do something. Something like that. And Cecile, like, had this, like, look on her face. Like, she was like... It was, like, kind of, like, sad or kind of, like, regretful or something like that. And then, and then Chester immediately apologized. And I was like... Who the fuck died? Like, why is he apologizing to Cecile? Did we miss something? Did I miss, like, did somebody die? Like, or are they referring to Cecile's mother who died years ago? And it's still a trigger for her. Like, what? Didn't she have a baby? Yeah, she had a baby, but the baby ain't dead. I don't, I don't think. I think that's very dark for Eric, who loves uh, showing this show to children. So... I don't, I don't know, girl. Which makes my argument still stand that Cecile is a useless ass character. Useless. She don't do her job. She don't do shit, but be up under Barry like that's her goddamn man. I don't understand why Cecile has so many scenes with Barry. It don't make no fucking sense at all. So Barry, you know, they have an epiphany again and Barry figures out where the Flush Gang is and what they about to do and why they got the cryptocurrency girl and whatever, he go meet them at the location. And it takes about a good 30 seconds and Barry wins the day and whoop they ass. And I'm like, now that's how you level up. Stop talking about it and be about it. Put some action behind them words. You didn't have to bury, bury you, Eric. You didn't have to tell us that Barry leveled up 50 fucking times. Be about it. Stop talking about it. <laughs> Period. Right? Um, so, Barry is... Uh, I'm skipping around, girl. I don't care. So, Barry is giving... Oh, no, I'm not. He did win this. I'm not skipping around. So, Barry is giving Ray a pep talk about science and whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? And Barry gonna say, yeah, I've learned so much from my team. I'm learning every day. No, he says, I'm learning every day from my team and they're learning from me. And I'm like, mm, I don't think that's true anymore. Like, yeah, definitely season one through four, you were definitely learning things from your team and they were learning things from you. That was the whole thing. That was the whole idea. That was the whole concept about season one. You learning from them and them learning from you about your powers but um in season seven hey baby i don't think you learning anything new from that team that's why everybody is in agreement from fanboys to west allen shippers that star labs is no longer needed and neither is team flash they're useless get rid of them iris is interviewing ray palmer and i'm like yes finally the girl's doing her job like finally right and i'm like I, I'm excited for Iris. I, I, hopefully they continue on doing this. Hopefully this is just not a one-time episode thing. Like in season seven when they were like, oh yeah, Iris is going to deal with her emotions and they did it in one fucking episode and never talked about it again. And then gave Cecile a mental health episode that didn't make any sense. Right? Hopefully like go two episodes doing her journalistic thing then let it die down a little bit then bring it back up for three more episodes and let it die down like it's a cycle like let it be in a in a cycle right and hopefully we get to see iris out on the streets interviewing people i would love to see that like everybody's fantasy is seeing iris west allen interview the flash knowing that people don't know that they're together that they're not married that this flat that the flash is still an unknown identity to at least I'll say 25% of Central City because he didn't took his mask off like 50, 11 times. So pretty much everybody in their mama know who, who the Flash is.
you know right so desperado shows up his name is desperio or whatever the hell his name is but i'm gonna call him desperado because i like that name better um so desperado show up and he trying to kill the flash and the flash is evil girl and they have this little cool little fight scene with ray palmer and he just shrinking them and making them big again it was cool i liked it i liked it i enjoyed it no no problems for me in that moment right but why do i feel like desperado is mistaking the flash for somebody else because remember in the comic books thawne got so obsessed with the flash that he ended up having plastic surgery to look like barry allen let's remember that but they love to use time girl they love to use time and don't make no sense of it they still using time and they said for part four that tom cavanaugh will be reprising his role as reverse flash i'm like he will never be free he gonna keep taking it because the money because i definitely would y'all paying me how much an episode yeah let me come and put this suit on like but we would never be free from tom cavanaugh like i don't feel like desperado is a villain like he is giving me the same vibe as mutton chops remember mutton chops wasn't really a villain he was really just trying to save the world and end doing so he actually did. girl it was go watch it yourself the, the ending crisis was stupid with the spectrum it was stupid girl didn't make no damn sense and and, and they didn't even they didn't spend they money on writing and creativity they spent their money on cameo so that's why i didn't make no damn sense um but i definitely don't feel like desperado is a real villain so desperado shows up to star labs and barry and him is talking and then the most the worst cgi i've ever seen so far in season eight was barry clicking his <laughs> mask off and you can it's just like a bulk of piece of like it was just terrible the cgi was terrible and i'm like out of all the times barry has had that click mask where it appear and disappear why is it so bad now like he's had that what since season six and it's just terrible now it's just it was just a terrible transition but besides that he took off his mask and he was like i'm barry allen i have nothing to hide you can search my history on my computer. I have nothing to hide. And I'm just like, I get it. Like, he, he, he's an alien from a different time period. But damn, Barry, you just got to show your identity to every fucking body, huh? <sighs> but overall, I give the episode like a 6.5. I think that it stayed the course of having good highs. You know, starting off with Barry and Caitlin. And then Barry rescuing uh, those people on the train and Keystone. And then having a scene with Iris doing her job. And then um, having the West Allen scene. And then Ray Palmer. And then Ray Palmer and Chester scenes. And I feel like the lows were definitely Cecile and, um, Cecile and Barry scene. And then the Star Lab scenes. So that's why it's a 6.5. And then on top of that, I feel like this is the worst premiere we have had in Flash history. Uh, compared to the other ones. I'm not saying it's a bad episode. I'm just saying that compared to the other season premieres, this one is pretty low on the list. Like the last, my least favorite. Um, I'm excited. Hopefully Black Lightning is next for part two. And then uh, Ryan, Batwoman for part three. I'm excited, yeah. I'm excited for Black Lightning. I'm excited for that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and now. Nah.